here we go. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I've got another fat off-road bike. This one is called the Falcon 2 Pro from a company called MZZK. Now these guys are actually an Amazon seller. They recently launched this bike for $1,598. And in that price range, there's a lot of competition like Hemiway, HGM, Aventon. All those bikes are in the price range of 1,000 to 2,000 for off-road riding, off-road bikes. I have been surprised with these no-name Amazon bikes before in the past. I've also been very disappointed. <laughs> so let's get the review started and see where this bike falls. Pro is off to a good start. It comes with a 750 watt Bafang motor, and that is the same motor, same size as a lot of the other brands in this price range. Now that's powered by a 48 volt, 12.8 hour lithium battery that you can remove and takes four to six hours for recharge. Now the average speed for bikes in this category is anywhere from 25 to 30 miles an hour. The top bike hit 32 miles per hour, so that is the speed to beat. The Pro is rated up to 20 miles per hour, so I don't think we're gonna hit that top speed with this one, but I'm gonna show you how fast each of the five pedal assist levels can go, starting off with level one. Okay, I've got a full charge on the bike. My speed app is open. I've got a pretty flat road here, pedal assist level one. Here we go. One is 10, two is 13, four, uh, two, is, two is 13, 14, three is 14, 15, Four is, uh, four is 17, 18, <laughs> and five is 22. Well, I got 22 miles per hour for the top speed, which is two over what the rating is. And you probably noticed that there's not a lot of variation between the pedal assist levels. I wish there was at least, you know, three to four miles per hour between each level. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the closest grouping I've ever seen on a bike. Okay, next it's time to see uh, how long it takes to hit 22 miles per hour. Now, most bikes in this price range take about nine to 10 seconds to, to reach 20 miles per hour. So that's, uh, that's the goal we're going for, that's the mark. The Pro's frame weighs 61 pounds, one of the lighter frames in this price range. And it also has one of the lightest carrying capacities at 265 pounds. Now it's got a thumb throttle on the right side. I'm gonna compare that with pedal assist level five and see which one is faster and see if we can hit that nine to 10 second mark. Well, the acceleration overall is actually pretty good for this bike. On pedal assist uh, five on the, on the lowest gear, gear one, it takes about one to one and a half revolutions for the power to kick in and then about 10 feet before it really kicks in and ends up actually being a pretty fast bike. On throttle, the, the first five, six feet, it's actually very, very slow. I almost lost my balance because it wouldn't pick up, it wouldn't like start. But after that, it actually kicks in and is, is very fast as well. The Pro has a range rating of 31 to 62 miles. For this test, I am gonna be completely off-road. Again, this is an off-road bike. I'm out here in the desert. Let's see how far I can go. So as I'm going through this race test, I'll tell you the things I like and don't like about the bike. I do like the color, the design of the bike. I think it looks pretty cool. They've thrown a lot of paint on the frame and just kind of made it stand out and pop a little bit. The Pro has got some noises that I'm not a big fan of. I don't know what's happening here. The motor or something is, is whistling. It kind of goes in and out. As far as a solid and sturdy feel, it's not the best. I'll just be honest with you guys. And I get it, you know, you can't uh, go high end on uh, a lot of these parts. That does drive up the price. These types of bikes are basically just designed to get you from A to B. Hopefully have a somewhat decent range. Not really gonna be the most comfortable or solid feeling bike out there. Now, as far as geometry, I'm 5'11", and feel pretty comfortable on the Pro. Handlebars are a good length away from the seats. You can't adjust them either. They are fixed, they're stationary. They say this can fit a rider 5'7 and higher. So if you got a small frame, you would find it a little bit tricky and difficult to manage, especially if you're gonna head off road. For paved trail riding, you'd be fine if you're smaller than 5'7". Well, let me dive into the cockpit. 
first off, you have a pretty good stance, good width on the handlebars. And they are kind of your standard mountain bike handlebars. I've got good control and don't feel cramped. It's a good spread. The grips aren't that bad. I actually kind of like them. They're smaller, something that you would find on a mountain bike. The brake levers have this glossy look to them, which is kind of interesting. And uh, they also feel very cheap too. Nothing really special about them. There is a bell. I'll just let you listen to it here. It's amazing. <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't really work. There's a seven speed micro new trigger shifter. It's not my favorite shifter. When I'm on the seventh gear, I've got to hit that uh, down lever at least twice to actually bring it back down to one. So it is a little bit slow in shifting. Now the saddle is the hardest saddle I've ever tried. It's this long and skinny design. It kind of looks cool with this little cutout in the back, but man, it is hard. So as far as uh, the pedal assist sensitivity, I'm on uh, level one right now on the easiest gear. And I just got a nice cadence I'm going eight miles an hour, which is a little bit too slow for this trail. Now, if I bump that up to the highest gear on a uh, pedal assist one, I'm actually getting a pretty good workout now. There's a lot of resistance. I'm putting in about 30 to 40% effort here. Pedal assist level two on the seventh gear. I'm back up to my regular cadence. That's a good amount of pressure right there. I mean, it's, it's not too much. I can get a little bit of a burn if I quicken it just a hair, but that's kind of like the perfect speed, the perfect cadence for a trail like this. Pedal assist three on the highest uh, gear. This is where it gets a little bit annoying going too fast. The shocks just aren't equipped well enough for this, uh, for this speed. It is quite bumpy. And I have the same amount of resistance as with level two. Now on pedal assist four, really gotta be careful on uh, the rocks and the terrain now, because when I hit them, it, it feels like the bike is gonna explode. <laughs> That's way too fast. Once the bike hits about 15 miles per hour, just casually pedaling, really can't feel any more resistance. Now on PAS5, when I'm going about 15, 16 miles an hour or above, it takes about half a second for the motor to kick off when I stop pedaling, and at about a revolution and a half to two for it to kick back on and that is on the highest gear. Now the throttle is less sensitive than the pedal assist, which is typically the opposite. When I release the throttle, that power does lag a little longer than I like, but then when I engage the throttle, it actually kicks on and it turns on pretty quick and powerful. It's actually got a lot of power for a bike in this uh, price range. Now the Pro comes with a still front fork suspension that can be locked out and adjusted. Let me find a couple rocky sections and some other areas to show you how well it does. It is kind of a cheaper suspension, something that you would expect for a bike in this price range. And last but not least, the Pro has 26 by four inch all-terrain fat tires. And they're kind of a funky looking tire, really not that beefy at all. I just like a knobby and beefy tire. I just, that's what I prefer. They just look cool too. Just adds a whole element of toughness to the bike. Okay, I just, uh, battery's uh, about dead. It's flashing. And uh, so that concludes the range test. 13.4 miles with 870 feet of elevation, which is pretty good gain. That's, uh, that's a good amount of uh, climbing. I was hoping to get a little bit more range than that, but uh, 13 miles for the type of terrain that I did is, is it's okay. It would have been really, I mean, this would have been like off the charts if I would have got above 20 for the type of terrain that I rode it on. And honestly, I'm pretty good. Like I'm, I'm tired, I'm done riding. So that was a, a good ride. Battery lasted to where I was ready to call it quits, which is always nice. Now, just so you guys know, I did have it on the highest pedal assist level. I used throttle almost the entire time. I, there was very little pedaling. It's just too bumpy to pedal, to be honest with you. And without hard seats, I didn't spend a lot of time sitting down. 
I also had a bunch of hard stops, hard starts. I did all my testing as the app was recording. So the hill test, speed test, acceleration, all of that was done as I was recording. So just so you know, I didn't just casually ride this on some you know, dirt roads. <laughs> I rode it hard. <laughs> so when you take that into consideration, 13 and a half miles is pretty good. So this, like a lot of other bikes in this price range, you really gotta be choosy on the type of trail that you pick. There have been some sections that I've had a lot of fun. I could go a little bit faster, stood up and just throttled it and just had a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, it's time for a hill test. The Pro has a torque rating of 80 Newton meters. I've got some good hills out in this area. Let's see how it does. Okay guys, I found a nice hill to test. So at the bottom, we have 11.9%. In the middle is 18.7. And towards the top, this is the steepest part here. We've got 34%, 34.8. Got the bike down there. Gonna have a running start at it. Try to hit about 10 or so miles an hour as I start to climb and see uh, how well it does. Okay, uh, I do have one battery bar missing. I'm in pedal assist five on the easiest gear. Here we go. And I start to climb right here. Oh, that's got awesome power here. Hardest parts, 10 miles, nine miles an hour, seven over the top. There we go. Yeah, that made light work out of that hill. And that was over 30% at the steepest. So you can definitely do steeper, definitely do longer. That has uh, some surprisingly good hill climbing ability. I was expecting much less. The Pro has dual disc brakes. It's time for a brake test. Uh, let me show you how the brakes handle here. Got a downhill section. Here we go. And some good wind too, good grief. As you can hear that, they are squeaking. And honestly, not a lot of stopping power. I do have to squeeze on the handles quite a bit, almost all the way to the, uh, to the grips for them to <laughs> engage hard. Now with this dust out here, it makes sense that they're squeaking a little bit. Some bikes do that and some bikes don't. So not the best brakes. Uh, they could definitely use some work. Again, I always say this is an affordable bike, so you get affordable things like brakes. Let me run you through the LCD screen and control pad. Just one singular unit here, as you can see. Power button in the middle. There we go. Sunny day outside and can easily see the screen. And it is kind of small. It's about two inches from corner to corner. If you hit the power button, that changes the different readouts. Pedal assist, plus and minus to change the pedal assist level, zero to five. And then to enter the advanced settings, just hold the plus and minus button down. Uh, most of these I don't know how to change. I will try to find some information on how to do that. I reached out to the company, they just haven't gotten back with me yet on how to change these. I'll have that information in the description when I post the video, so be on the lookout for that. Hold the power button to get back to the main screen, and there you go. The Pro has an IP65 waterproof rating, which means that it can withstand splashing from any angle, a one-year warranty, and free shipping in the lower 48. Well, the key thing to remember with this bike is you gotta be choosy with the trail. I know I say that a lot. Uh, this is a fun bike, a fun ride. If you stand up, if you have a trail that doesn't have a lot of rocks. You saw my drone footage in the review. If you pick out something like that, you know, you can have a lot of fun on this. I was also impressed with the hill climbing ability. There's no hill rating, but it tackled some pretty steep terrain. If you do want to pick this up, I've got the link over to Amazon in the description. Also be sure to check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.